What's up everyone and welcome back to the comms channel. In today's video we're going to do some testing and review the mobile linked TNC4 and we'll see how it compares to some of my other packet radio options. So hang around and we'll get into it. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. The Mobilink TNC4 is a device I've been waiting a while to get a hold of. I've just recently gotten into packet radio this past year and with the TNC3 not being available I had to look at other options while I waited for that to either become available again or a new updated version to come out. And that's actually how I discovered the Nucleo TNC which I did a video series on building that if you're interested. I'll include a link in the video description below. But now that we do have the TNC4 in our hands, let's see how it does. The manuals before first use section mentions that it's best to plug it in and charge before first use. However, when plugging in the charger, I was unable to get the red LED to light up that would indicate it was charging. After trying a few chargers, I was finally able to get it to charge. And later on, I found out the cause of this when I received some emails from the MobileLink mailing list. Some chargers appear as a USB host to the TNC4 instead of a charger. And that was the cause of the issue. And this has since been fixed in a firmware update. Now, I got the first batch of TNC4s that went out. But I would imagine that the later batches will have this latest firmware with the fix for this already included. The version mine shipped with is 2.5.1 and the current version as of this video is 2.5.9. As you can see here there have been a number of fixes so you may want to check your current version and update if needed. Pairing the device to my Android phone was straightforward. You just need to download the mobile linked app from the store, briefly press the S1 button on the TNC4 so the blue LED slowly flashes, open up the Bluetooth settings in the app, select pair new device, and then select the TNC4 when you see it. Then you go back to the main screen and you should be able to connect by hitting the connect button. Now I don't have an Apple device to test pairing with, but it looks pretty straightforward as well based on looking through the manual. Now after pairing to your phone, you're ready to configure the audio settings, which brings me to another benefit of the TNC4 compared to the Nucleo TNC. On the Nucleo TNC, you're not able to configure the audio settings from the mobile linked phone app. You have to connect to it to a computer and use their serial TNC config app. Now on to connecting radios. I'll be testing a number of different radios I have here in my shack. I'll start off with the primary radio I've been using with the Nucleo TNC which is a radio from the 90s, the uh, ICOM W32A. To do the test I'll have the built-in TNC on my Kenwood THD74A turned on and if the Kenwood successfully receives a message and the radio being tested receives the acknowledgement in return, I'll call the test successful. And now we'll send a test message from the ICOM here. Alright, so that test went well. Let's test the other radios I have here. Now for the ICOM ID52, I was pleasantly surprised that this one worked. This was a radio I could not get working with the Nucleo TNC, because for some reason it seemed to cut off the first bit of the transmission, so that's another in the win column for the TNC4, for me at least. And now we have the Baofeng. While I was able to get it to work, it was pretty frustrating. The TNC4 manual also mentions not to expect miracles with the use of these cheap Chinese radios. So if you have one of these cheap Chinese radios, I say give it a try, but just know that your mileage may vary. If you don't have one of these and are thinking of getting one, I would actually avoid them. 
I often see these being recommended to new hams, but it would seem that the Chinese save their quality radio components for their spy balloons. And if you're on a budget, I would actually suggest going for a used radio instead, like my ICOM W32, which I found at a ham fest for $50. And again, this radio was my main radio that I used with the Nucleo TNC, and it worked just fine for me. Now, with that said, I did test with another one of the cheap Chinese radios, and that would be the TYT UV88. Now, that one performed just fine for me without the frustrations of the Baofeng. Also tested the Yezu FT4X, which is kind of an expensive Chinese radio with internals similar to the Baofeng. However, I will note that mine actually has a label showing built in Japan, but I have seen where some of these are built in China. Either way, I'm sure the build quality of these Yezus are going to be much better than the Baofeng and should be better performers for packet radio. As you can see, I was able to use all the radios I threw at the TNC4. So it's safe to say that as long as they have a cable available for your radio, you should be able to use the TNC4 with it. If they don't have a cable for your radio, which is the situation I ran into with my Yezu FTM 400 that I use in my vehicle, there is still hope and I will show the workaround for that in another video. Another benefit of the TNC4 for my use case is its ultra compact size as you can see here with it next to the Nucleo TNC. The Nucleo TNC in its case I 3D printed is a tight fit in the radio pouch I have on my hiking bag and I really need to force it in there to make it fit. Then there's the case of the bag I made for my ICOM 705 which does not have much room for anything else in there so the smaller size of the TNC is a welcome change there as well. Now how does the TNC4 and a radio compare to my Kenwood THD74 with its built-in KISS TNC? Having everything in one package without having to connect a cable to your radio and another device is hard to beat. The Kenwoods TNC will also do 9600 baud, and while the TNC4 will also do 9600, it can only do so if a supported radio is connected to it, and there are currently no handheld radios that support 9600 that don't already have a TNC built into them. Now this probably isn't a deal breaker for most, though, as I rarely see 9600 being used in the wild. With all things considered and given the choice between the TNC4 and the Kenwood, I would likely go with the Kenwood. With that said though, the Kenwood was their flagship HT when it was available and that came at a price. A price I believe was around $600 when it was available. Now that it's no longer available, it is very hard to find a good price for it and often seen on the used market for around $800 to even $1000. So with prices like that, I think the TNC4 coupled with another tri-band radio like the Yezu VX6R would be a worthy competitor if you're looking for something with similar capabilities and a much cheaper cost. So that'll do it for this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you all and have a good one.